no real way of telling whether or not this thing is streaming, so I'm just going to look at myself and make sure that it is. I think we're going, but let's just see if I see my own face on there. We are live, apparently. Different link. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Black Ladder live stream. I'm not actually texting right now. I'm just sending out the link to my people. Um, all right. Just going to share this link, and then we'll get started. with Canadian Equipment Outfitters. Uh, they asked us to be a part of this live stream. What we figured what we would do is talk a little bit about the relationship that we have with Canadian Equipment Outfitters, which is a very unique one. Um, talk about a little bit about our company and the four cornerstones of that company. Um, and talk about our environmental practices. And hopefully at some point have some time for a Q&A. Uh, I'm coming to you live from the Black Ladder Workwear store, and uh, the reason for that is basically I figured that I have all of our products at my disposal, so if someone had any questions about a specific product, um, I could just roll over and grab it for you. So, uh, let's just go over a quick little bit of a schedule here. Uh, we're going to start off with, uh, again, I'll talk about CEO and, and ourselves. Uh, we're going to talk about our company, talk about our four cornerstones. Um, tell you guys that there is a Q&A section and then uh, yeah, we'll go through those Q&As. Um, so basically, um, Canadian Equipment Outfitters and us are Black Ladder Workwear. Uh, we've been partners for some time now, but um, over the last couple of years, uh, Paul and Matt and myself, well the whole team actually, but mostly Paul, Matt, Herc and myself have been working together and Trevor, can't forget Trevor. Um, we've been working together to really build a relationship and build the brand awareness of Black Ladder and CEO up in the Innisville area, uh, just north of Toronto. Um, we had a unique, I, or a unique, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Opportunity last year to uh, open up the first ever North American uh, outlet store. Uh, that we at Black Ladder would let somebody else manage. Um, typically, we would have some some stuff last you know last year or uh, short inventory or um, products that we no longer carry that we would uh, just kind of sell ourselves uh, or sell direct to wholesalers. But uh, Canyon Equipment Outfitters and us had worked out a uh, scenario where they would do that for us. So if you are to go into store when you're allowed to do that, uh, they have probably the most extensive list or yeah list of products outside of our own store uh, in Canada for sure um, and you can find pretty much anything you'd be looking for, for for our current catalog and they also have a really awesome uh, outlet of our past season items if you would call it that um, <clears throat> they also you can find these products uh, at CanadianEquipmentOutfitters.com and you can actually if you go to BlackLadder.com if you click the outlet link you can also find uh, that outlet store. And I will remind you of that throughout this, uh, this live stream. Um, but that's all I'm going to say about it right now. So again, I'm not uh, texting, but uh, we have uh, CJ Miller, who's our marketing manager, is helping me out with this live stream. Uh, he helped me put together the schedule, and uh, he's actually sent over some videos as well that 
um, the guys at Canadian Equipment Outfitters can use throughout this weekend um, just to show a little bit more of what we're all about. Um, but CJ is going to be manning the phones and the comments section, and he's just going to be letting me know let me know if you guys have any questions as we go along. If there's anything pressing about what I'm talking about, I'll try to answer it in the moment. But otherwise, I'm basically just going to save uh, those questions until the end. So please, any questions you might have about uh, our products, uh, either current or what may be coming down the pike uh, in the future, uh, any specific functionality questions you might have about our products, um, or if you have, a, if you are of a specific trade and you just want to know what would be the best possible product for your job or your trade, feel free to ask that question as well. Um, so I'm just going to grab a sip of water and then we'll get started. Stones, um, and those four cornerstones tend to bleed into each other a little bit, but I'm just going to talk about a little bit of the history of our company um, and then into how those four cornerstones tie into that. Um, so our four cornerstones are quality, sustainability, functionality, and design. And as I mentioned, some of those things might bleed into others, and we try to make every decision uh, at Black Ladder keeping at least one of those, but typically all four of those cornerstones in mind. Um, my favorite is uh, sustainability. It's a big reason why I work for this company. Um, I really believe in doing our part um, uh, for the environment. Uh, I'm a big believer in uh, that climate change is real and that uh, we need to do our best to mitigate uh, climate change and what it does uh, to our planet because I'd like to leave a good planet for my family and, uh, and their subsequent families. Um, so when it comes to environmentalism, um, Black Ladder is a huge advocate and it comes down to uh, a very basic principle. Um, if you make really good quality garments, they're going to outlast uh, the competition but they're just going to last longer in general. And at the end of the day, you're going to be putting less garbage into the planet. So the better your better quality, you're going to last longer, less garbage. Uh, that fact alone is something that very few workwear brands take into consideration uh, while designing their clothing. A lot of companies just think about how can we make this the cheapest we possibly can because they think that people think that price is the main driver for their business. But for all of you people that are out there that have, uh, you know, maybe chosen uh, a cheaper product in the past, uh, especially from a professional standpoint, you know that that's going to bite you in the behind at, uh, later on because you end up having to reinvest in that product more frequently. But if you spend quality, like any equipment outfitters, they carry quality brands like Still, Husqvarna, uh, Big Dog. These are all quality brands that are going to outlast the competition because you as a professional, you don't want to have to keep buying the same stuff over and over again. So we live by the same principle at Black Ladder. Uh, we create garments that are going to outlast uh, the competition and it in turn is great for the environment. Um, that kind of leads us into the quality aspect of things. Uh, how are our garments of higher quality? Well, uh, the main thing is that we don't ever cut corners when it comes to making a garment. Um, let me see if I can grab something and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So this is our 1600 um, Craftsman pant. It's a pretty awesome pant. It's got uh, some dangling utility pockets uh, in the front here. You want to keep some nails or fasteners in there. It's got slide and knee pad pockets little bit of Cordura at the bottom. And what Cordura is, is a military grade woven nylon that's 10 times more abrasive resistant than say like a pair of jeans would be. 
So the reason why we use a product called Cordura and the brand name Cordura, not just a woven nylon like most other brands might use, um, Cordura is synonymous with quality and it, again, having the, the abrasion resistance in areas where you might normally wear out your pants, um, it's going to make those pants themselves last a lot longer. Um, so that's one way that we do it, is the quality of materials that we use are the highest possible quality in everything that we do. Uh, aside from that, the, the physical construction of our pants, uh, now these numbers aren't perfect, but just for argument's sake, a typical, if, when you man manufacture pants, they go down an assembly line, and they're going to stop at each part of the assembly line. Someone's going to maybe sew on a pocket or sew on a belt loop or, you know, maybe add this cordura on the bottom. So those are different stops on the assembly line. A typical work pant, um, I'm not going to name any names, but let's say the ordinary brands might have anywhere from 30 to 40 stations in, the in their uh, assembly line to get a pair of pants made. At Black Ladder, this pair of pants has over 110 work stops or uh, workstations on the assembly line, where, and that just goes to show you that, like that, every every little detail that we put into these pants has that every little bit of extra special care that um, you know, as I said, the ordinary brands wouldn't be able to do. Uh, people are asking questions, and they want to ask questions. Right now, and they want answers right now. And I thought CJ was. Oh, there you okay. Thank you, Chaz. Uh, he just told me that people are asking questions and they're answering those questions. Uh, apparently, someone wants to see a surveyor vest. Well, uh, let me finish what I'm talking about and I'll grab you guys a surveyor vest. Absolutely. Um, If you can't tell, this is my first live stream, and uh, apparently it's not going so well. What do we got here? This stuff is awesome. Does it hold up better than Carhartt? I wouldn't even uh, dignify that with a response. Um, I would say we don't typically um, compete with brands like Carhartt or Ariat, uh, just mainly because their functionality isn't on the same level as ours. So yes, uh, those brands are synonymous with that cotton uh, canvas sort of material, which is a very uh, um, very sturdy fabric. We do have some, some products in that cotton canvas. But uh, I would say that the attention to detail like I'm talking about now with the quality, um, the attention to quality and craftsmanship that we put into our clothing is really what sets us apart. Um, I mean, a very, very quick differentiator between us and them is that um, you, you can see right here in the crotch we have a triple stitch that runs all the way from one ankle through the crotch and out to the other ankle and the reason why we do that believe it or not it's only an extra bit of stitching but you can imagine when if you go from double stitch to triple stitch we put what's that 30 percent more stitching 50%, I'm not good at math. We put a lot more stitching in our products than maybe some of our competitors would. So uh, that adds up over time. That costs us money, um, and it ends up saving you uh, your crotch in the long run. That triple stitch will um, uh, withstand more tension, or tension than uh, a double stitch would. Uh, we actually, you, there's videos of us online doing tugs of war, tug of war with these pants. Uh, you get the two biggest guys at a trade show trying to pull these things apart, and they can't do it. It's not possible. I think in the history of Black Ladder North America, it's happened once, and apparently those guys were cheap. So, uh, yeah, triple stitch, uh, just one of the many reasons why we would, um, comparing us to a brand like Carhartt or Area, uh, we would uh, definitely be the more durable and uh, functional option. Uh, why do your knee pads feel differently than the rest of the pants? Oh, well, I think I mentioned that. Uh, that's the Cordura um, in the, the knee pad pocket and at the bottom. Um, and that's just mainly because you're going to be on your knees a lot, and that's a wear point, and you're going to be, um, you're going to want some abrasion resistance there. Any chance you could show the surveyor's vest? Um, 
Absolutely I can. And then I'll get back into the other three corners. So, excuse me. This is our 3134 surveyor's vest. Uh, it's relatively new to Canada. Um, we have had a lot of success with our high visibility line, and um, one of the things we do really well is we add functionality to our garments that um, you might not find in another in another uh, company. So, with the surveyor's vest, we wanted to bring out something that was just. Uh, uh, synonymous with that idea. So, surveyor's vest, uh, this thing is awesome. Um, it's made of our durable ripstop material. You can see that. See those little squares right there? Uh, if you don't know what ripstop is, essentially it's a little bit of, there are these segmented squares all over the fabric so that it may not necessarily stop the garment from ripping. Say you snag it on a nail or a piece of rebar or something like that. But what ripstop does do is those segmented squares stop the rip from spreading. So um, again, when we when we build our garments, we think about what is going to make this garment last longer. And if you have a garment that you can tear, you can tear a little bit, but it's not going to rip, uh, tear, and fall apart uh, like what you, you normally used to, then that's a pretty good fact. So ripstop uh, material on the front. We've got a nice, comfortable air mesh on the back. You can see it's got the CSA certified high visibility X on the back. Um, it's got a nice breathable air mesh. Uh, a big thing about surveyor's vests uh, in general is that this isn't something you're just throwing on and off. You're pretty much wearing this thing eight to 10 hours a day on the job site. Um, so that being said, it needs to be breathable, hence the air mesh. It needs to be comfortable, hence this nice, soft, squishy, um, what would you call that? Like a shoulder something or other? <laughs> um, nice support on the shoulders uh, to stop that weighing you down. A surveyor is typically going to be wearing, uh, carrying a lot of weight. Uh, very typical with surveyor vest is the back pocket for carrying an iPad. Um, this thing has got pockets everywhere. Um, uh, we've got one here to keep your radio in. There's pen pockets. There's uh, hooks to keep your radio or another radio on or a different type of radio. Cell phone pocket. Pockets inside of pockets. There's just pockets everywhere. You can keep another iPad over here. But the point is, you're going to be carrying around a lot of extra weight with this thing because uh, that's what these surveyors do. Is they're wearing these things out in the in a field for eight to ten hours a day, so they have to carry everything on. So nice lightweight vest. It's got the uh, added support in the neck area in case things are pulling down on you. Um, and um, just decent or durable, lightweight construction to begin with. A big thing with vests too is this is, uh, you know, a typical vest can get anywhere from like 5 to 25 to $40. Um, this retails for $120, which is actually very... Um, Reasonable for a surveyor vest, especially something of this high quality and with this many, this much functionality. Um, but because you're spending 120 bucks, that's not uh, anything to shake a stick at as far as um, as far as price goes. So you probably don't want to buy one in the summer and then one in the winter to throw over your jacket. So because of that, we put this two-inch zip out like your luggage. So in the winter time, um, or if right after Thanksgiving you gain a little bit too much turkey weight. You just throw that two-inch zip on out, and now you can put this over top of your over top of your uh, your winter jacket, and you've got plenty of extra space. One one uh, vest, good for the whole season, whole year rest. What else you got? Any more questions? That's all I see so far. Yeah, seems like it. 
20 minutes. I've only done, I got 40 minutes left to talk. Well, I could do about 20 minutes or 15 minutes of pillar, I guess. 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes. Uh, so sustainability, we talked about that. Uh, another thing that uh, I wanted to tie off on that is, um, yeah, I mean, like, it's great. We make awesome garments, and uh, they last longer. And so for you, as a consumer, you're putting less garbage into the planet after, uh, um, you know, by wearing less. Um, but what, another thing we do as a company is um, our manufacturing is incredibly small compared to the ordinary brand. So typically, when you make a garment, um, especially let's talk about high visibility garments, um, from an end user perspective, the company just wants to buy the cheapest possible thing. So a lot of, um, a lot of manufacturers just try to make really, really, really cheap high vis. Because they know that a lot of companies are just trying to check a box. Yeah, we got a vest. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, they want to do the bare minimum in order to keep their people safe, which we do, we never believe in the bare minimum, because especially when it comes to safety. So when it comes to high visibility, um, we do the bare maximum. Uh, another thing about uh, high visibility, like I said, is uh, a lot of it is made in China. It's trying to be made really cheap. Uh, and that's, if you want something done cheap, you make it in China. Um, and that manufacturing process, it, you know, you might sew on the striping in one uh, factory. Then you ship it to another part of another territory and you sew on another accessory and then you ship it across here. And there's a lot of like moving one garment all over China or the provinces of China trying to get it finished uh, for shipping. Whereas everything we do from start to finish is in one factory. So we source our fabrics, and then from that point, it's all built at, like I said, that uh, kind of assembly line inside one factory. So just the fact that we're not shipping stuff all over China is, uh, is incredibly good for the environment because we're not, you know, all the, the gas and chemicals and all that stuff, the exhaust and, and emissions that come along with shipping uh, and trucking. And, and then not to mention our, our facilities uh, are at about 50% solar capacity and uh, we also have wastewater treatments on plant, uh, are on hand, um, making garments, washing garments, um, preparing garments. Uh, you use a lot of water for that, especially in the, on the fabric side of things. So uh, we want to make sure that we do our best to reuse as much water as we can. Um, yeah. So that's that's basically our environmentalism. It's um, you know, like I said. Great garments going to last you much longer, but then we, we make the smart decisions and the good decisions at the beginning of the process so that we can feel good about it throughout the entire process. Um, we talked a bit about quality, um, and quality, it all kind of ties into each other. I mean, making better garments leads to better environmental practices, um, but yeah, it's mainly just we have, we never cut corners where other companies might have corners. Um, like for example, this is uh, what is known in the biz as a carpenter's pocket. And you can see that this carpenter's pocket runs, here's the main seam of the side of the pants that runs down here. And this carpenter's pocket is sewn on top of that main seam. So normally what an ordinary brand would do is that they would actually offset this pocket, either forward or backward. There's a lot of, this is a very popular pocket when it comes to functional workwear. Excuse me. So um, a, lot of a lot of functional brands do have this pocket on there. But by putting it on top of the seam, this adds another station in our production. So it adds cost to the pants. Um, and, but by... by not cutting corners on this step, what this does is it creates a situation when you go down on your knees, I wish I could show you, but it's really hard to move my camera. Uh, when you go down on your knees, this pocket actually comes away from you as opposed to, say you got a knife or a pen in there, dig it into your leg. And it's all about um, comfort and uh, functionality for you. Um, I argue that, moving on to the next thing, that functionality uh, is a huge part of what we do, but a big part of that functionality is comfort as well. So we want to make sure that the garments that we are making uh, have been tested on the job. Uh, they're designed in uh, harmony with 
trades, whether it be GCs or craftsmen or anything really, uh, craftswomen. Um, we have uh, everything's done in conjunction with uh, with partners that we have, so that we know that these things actually work on the job. All of these functions aren't just you know things we dreamed up. Be like, hey, it'd be cool if we had this pocket inside of our pants. The reason why we put them there is because um, is because we want to make sure that uh, these things actually work. I watched a video recently of a guy reviewing a very popular workwear brand, and he climbed up a ladder, and when he got to the top. His, his screwdriver just kept falling out of the back. And he's like, yeah, I love these pants, I guess, but like they're, they're not very functional for me. So uh, I reached out to that guy and just said, like, hey, just so you know, we have thought about this, this, and this to offset your, your screwdriver hanging out of, hanging out of your pants. Um, and, uh, yeah, so functionality, uh, them being comfortable is one side of it, but them also adding function to your job. Because just think about it this way. Every trip to the toolbox is lost time. So if you own a business and say you have 20 guys and they don't have any functional pants, they're just wearing jogging pants on the job site or something like that, um, you know, they might be able to carry a couple fittings in their pants um, and that's basically it. But if they're wearing functional workwear where they have um, some pockets where they can keep extra fittings and like carpenter pockets, extra tools. Uh, they've got knee pad pockets, so they're not having to strap on those knee pads. They're always there for them um, and very lightweight and not, um, they don't even really realize that they're even there and I can show you the knee pads in a bit too. But mainly, um, you know, every time you got to walk over the toolbox and put knee pads on, that's wasted time. So if you have 20 guys taking, let's call it 15, 20 minutes a day, running back and forth the toolboxes, grabbing fittings, grabbing nails, grabbing knee pads, all that stuff. That time adds up, and I am not good at math, so I'm not gonna to try to do that math for you right now, but just, you can do the math yourself. Like, figure out how many guys are on your team, and how much, even if they're wasting 10 minutes each a day, you got 20 guys on your team, that's 200 minutes a day that are just gone. Three hours of your hard-earned money um, wasted because these guys don't have any functionality in their clothing. Um, what else we got here? Uh, that's kind of functionality. I've got uh, surveyor's vest. I got knee pads. I'll talk about them, like I said. Um, CJ, keep chatting me stuff. Just let me know what people say so that I don't have to keep bouncing back and forth from two places. I'm talking about my pillars. Uh, I'm going to talk about the ripstop pants, of course. And, uh, ooh, what pants would I recommend for a concrete forming? What pants would you, okay. Um, and uh, we have a question about the ladies, which is here as well. I'll talk about the ladies in a second. So uh, for a concrete forming, um, concrete is a very particular beast. Um, actually, Canadian Equipment Outfitters, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, they have the only online outlet in Canada, Canadian Equipment CanadianEquipmentOutfitters.com, I'm sure there's some sort of link below to their website. Um, I mean, it's 2020, if you can't Google things, like what do you, you're on this feed, so you should know how to figure out how to get to CanadianEquipmentOutfitters.com, but they have the only black ladder outlet uh, in Canada, and they've got some really awesome stuff and insane prices there. Um, but it ain't about price, it's about quality. So, uh, if you're a... Um, construction, uh, sorry, concrete foreman, you're probably going to want something like, first of all, you're outside all day, uh, you're in the sun, uh, you're probably not working on the uh, uh, inside, and then in the winter time, you're probably working, um, you're probably working uh, in, in some pretty cold weather as well. So uh, I can break that down into two different sets of products. Um, <clears throat> typically, uh, a lot of um, Concrete foremen and concrete guys aren't typically going to want any of these uh, these bells and whistles. Uh, some of them do. Most bricklayers and concrete and masonry guys aren't super into that, uh, but I, they are into these. One second.
figured I'd grab a few things so I stopped running away. Um, these are our ripstop pants. And uh, they are, uh, this is actually our best selling pant, um, the ripstop pant. These are in blue. They come in stone, blue, and black. Um, I personally like the blue myself. There's a little bit of contrasting with the black Cordura. Um, they have a gusseted stretch crotch, so they're nice and comfortable, and you can very easily do uh, squats in them and uh, be moving up and down ladders and such, and they're very comfortable, very breathable. Um, typically, a lot of our pants are uh, be, being heavier duty, they're made of like cotton twill or a canvas or something like that, and um, they can get a little hot in the summertime. So uh, with that, we came up with this ripstop pant, which does come in a short version as well. A um, little bit of cordura at the bottom to avoid boot fray. They actually have a little bit of a cinch here, not a little bit, a lot of a cinch right here. Uh, so you can cinch off the bottom of your pants. If you're doing landscaping or something like that, um, you can stop the uh, ticks and critters from falling off of your pants. But for someone in concrete, um, you're going to be dealing with rebar. You're going to be snagging your pants. Uh, we actually have uh, an ambassador, he's called the Concrete Gangster, um, and you can find him on Instagram. Uh, he actually is a huge fan of our products, and that's how our, this ambassador uh, ship became a thing, is that uh, him and I have been talking about just, um, you know, this is what we do, and he really loves our products, and uh, he does it, like we don't pay him anything, he just loves our products and talks about them. So um, he wears, uh, I believe he has the... Uh, stone ripstops, and uh, he wears a couple other of our products, but I remember when I first met him, he told me about how, uh, you know, he just wears cheap jogging pants because they just tear and he's going through pants like crazy. So, um, so what he does is, uh, uh, moving over to the ripstop, like I said, the ripstop is going to stop the rip from spreading, um, and yeah, it's a very comfortable, lightweight, if you're outside all summer long. Um, on the flip side, you might want to look at something like you might want to look at something like our uh, for the summertime or the winter time rather this is our um, high vis um, shell pant uh, it's got the slide and knee pad pockets as well uh, this is a wind and waterproof shell it also comes in a line version but mainly what this the point of this is you're going to be outside you're on top of a stack uh, or on top of a high rise um, pouring concrete, the wind's going to be cutting through there. You want to block out some of that wind with a, uh, a pant like this. Um, these do really well with, with concrete people. And again, you're like getting concrete uh, all over, cement all over your, yourself. Um, it's it's going to eat away at fabrics, but this is a nice durable fabric that's going to outlast anything else. About well, four times to one. Um, oh, apparently the Concrete Gangster wears the black rips off, so there you go. Um, ladies products, great question. Um, we at Black Ladder uh, truly believe that women don't want what we would call in the biz, just shrink it and pink it. So basically, historically, what companies will do is uh, they take a man's product and they make it into women's sizes, AKA just smaller sizes, and they put like some pink accents or just straight up make it pink. Like it's very popular to see pink vests in other workwear stores. Um, and we don't do anything like that. We make the same quality and uh, all four of our cornerstones, quality, durability, sustainability, uh, and functionality, and we do it with women's clothes as well. So you can see right here, um, here is a pair of women's craftsman pants, uh, and you can see that these things are pretty damn badass from top to bottom. This is actually the nicest pair of pants we have in North America. Um, we brought it here because if there, if there are women out there that take their job seriously, um, as seriously as, as most men do, then they're going to be as serious about their workwear as, as we are. So. This pair of pants has, um, it's a uh, denim, uh, rugged denim material. Uh, it's got the slide and knee pad pockets as well. It's got stretch panels behind the knees and also 
behind these knees. So when you're down on your knees, you can definitely uh, have a little bit more uh, maneuverability in the pants. They also have the gusseted, gusseted stretch crotch and then stretch in the waist too. So um, these are incredibly durable pants for women. Um, and the women that I know that have purchased them and wear them on their job, um, it's kind of hard to get them to take them off. Um, but that's the same with any of our pants, you know? Uh, people tend to fall in love with our stuff as soon as they try them out for the first time. We also have the ladies' stretch pants, which is, um, we also have that version. I'm wearing it for myself right now, but you can't see it. Uh, there's also a men's version of this stretch pant, and it's just an all around, super comfortable, uh, lightweight, breathable pant. Um, you know, it's great for if you work in a um, like a factory or if you drive a truck or any sort of service job. Um, it's not as durable as the other pants, um, but it is still built with all of our four cornerstones in mind. And uh, again, comfort is a huge part of functionality. So um, definitely the most comfortable thing you will ever wear. And again, it comes in men's pants. Um, so if you and your wife want to have like matching outfits, it's very possible to do that. Uh, we do have, at the moment, we have um, the ladies' um, knitted sweater. It's very similar to our men's knitted sweater, um, just so we can have a little bit of that, uh, like I said, same outfit. Or if you guys wanted to do um, for your crew, it's very easy to have a uh, uniform for men and women that would match. Um, these are just great layering pieces. Um, they're great for the spring and fall and to wear underneath a waterproof or wind and waterproof jacket in the uh, in the winter. We do have some more stuff coming. Um, I mean, we don't really have any immediate dates to announce, but um, keep your eyes on what we do bring out. Uh, if you were to have a glance at our Swedish catalog, uh, our Swedish website, you'll see that we have a very extensive women's line in, in Europe, and uh, we're looking to do a very similar thing here in North America, we just got to make sure we bring the right stuff. Um, all right, no more questions. So what's missing out of our four cornerstones? Man, 22 minutes left. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Uh, I'm just like drenched underneath all this. But it's good because I'm wearing this very breathable uh, polo, which is also uh, protects you from the environment. It's got uh, UV protection in here. And what's the third thing? Oh, it's uh, it's moisture wicking, but it also it's um, anti odor. So uh, if you've got a little bit of a smelly guy on your team, this is a great shirt for you guys. Um, it comes in blue, black, and gray again. Uh, that's typically I would say for most of our t-shirts and sweaters, blue, black, and gray, or blue, black, and stone. Uh, would be very easy for you to create a uh, uniform for your for your team. But this one here, again, it's moisture wicking, UV protectant, and for uh, the smellier guys, it's uh, anti-odor as well. Uh, whoa, what pants am I wearing? I'll go grab it for you. Uh, so yes, as I mentioned, we have the ladies' um, I should probably say the product numbers. Uh, 7159 is the ladies, and then the men's is the 1655. Is that right? I feel like that's not right. Yeah, 1655. Uh, stretch pants, and uh, yeah, just super comfortable. Comes in only black at the moment, um, but we do, it's got stretch in the knees, it's got stretch in the butt, and in the crotch, and just, I mean, I can't really say much more other than I pretty much wear nothing but these pants. They are incredibly comfortable and, uh, and they look pretty damn good too, I do say so myself. Um, uh, we still have design to talk about, but I guess this fits into design. Is uh, These are some of our knee pads. I just wanted to mention this. Um, so again, if you have uh, a crew that you guys wear strap-on knee pads, or don't wear knee pads at all, which is really the biggest problem. So you might, you might be, you might in your 20s and 30s, you're walking around, you're not using knee pads, and be like, ah, it's totally fine. You don't really start to feel that stuff until you're in your 40s and 50s, and you're like, oh man, I should have worn knee pads all these years, but you didn't, and now you can't walk, 
and you feel like it's remote. So uh, what we would recommend is uh, with our most of our pants, except for the 1655s that I'm currently wearing, um, they all have some sort of knee pad function. And the point with that is um, by wearing these knee pads all the time, you don't have to worry about, oh, I, my toolbox is over there. I got to run 20 feet. I'll ah, forget it. I'll just do the job like this. Um, they're just always in your pants. And you can't really tell, but these are very, very lightweight. Um, like collectively, these probably weigh like less than a quarter of a pound, if, if that. And um, yeah, so super lightweight. Uh, don't even notice that you're wearing them. Um, and they're built to conform, if you can see these little, they have these little um, foam pockets here, uh, they conform to your knee. So imagine this is your knee. When you put the, when you go down in your knees, these pockets will conform to your knee and they're just right there when you need them. So if you're, you're not worrying about something sliding around all over the place, you're having to put it on. It's just always there all day long. You go down on your knees and it's there for you. It saves your knees. You don't have to think about it. Um, so this is the 4011 uh, standard knee pad. They retail for about 20 bucks. Um, there is also uh, the 4018, uh, which is a little bit longer of a knee pad. This is more for um, a lot of floor layers, uh, people that are on their knees um, and moving up and down a floor, like carpet layers or, or uh, carpenters uh, or people that lay like hardwood floor and stuff like that. They like these because it's a little bit longer of a, of a knee pad. Um, you can see the difference here. It's uh, almost twice as long and uh, almost as wide. And the idea here is that um, you're going to be moving more, la uh, I guess, laterally along or horizontally. I don't know. Moving straight forward and back. Uh, and you're going to end up um, just having a little bit more protection. It's, it's a, lot of, uh, a lot of people in the flooring industry like those. Um, and then if you find yourself on the floor, on your knees, uh, more often than not, so those would be, um, those would be good for, um, you know, if you're on your knees for like an hour or less a day, but anything more than an hour, and you're going to want something like this, which is our neoprene, um, gel, it's not neoprene, it's a, it's a gel, um, but it's a very, uh, thick and rugged uh, knee pad. These go for about 60 bucks. Um, typically, if you're using your, if you're on your knees that much, you're going to want something like this anyway. Um, but a pair, typical pair of knee pads, um, I would say, should last you about a year. Um, whether you're using these or using those appropriately, uh, you should get about a year out of your knee pads. Um, and at, at the very least, I would say. Some people might disagree with that, and I'm sure they'll tell me in a group chat. But um, yeah, I think um, it's with our pants, it's almost a no-brainer that if you're buying a pair of pants, you should be buying a pair of knee pads as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's our knee pads. Um, seems like it for questions. Um, Am I boring you guys? Are you, uh, are you into this? Or am I just speaking into a void? How does that, like, you just, everyone just, it's on, but they're not really listening to what Chris is saying. Um, let me just check. Oh, hey, the Canadian Carpenter's on here. Get out of town! Uh, yeah, uh, another one of our, um, one of, another one of our ambassadors is Joe, the Canadian Carpenter. Uh, he came on board a couple of uh, weeks ago. Uh, we're looking forward to working with him. Um, he's uh, big in the, uh, I guess you would say, the framing world. Um, really nice guy. And uh, yeah, shout out to him. Who else is on this thing? Uh, ooh, this guy is looking. Great stream. Love the presentation and information. We'll be looking for more into black, looking more into black ladder and CEO. That's great. Ooh, what's coming up? I don't know how I'm allowed to talk about what's coming up. Um, 
People are taking notes. Wow. Uh, what's coming up from Black Ladder? Well, first of all, I think I should mention again that uh, you can find us at uh, Canadian Equipment Outfitters and uh, either in store or online. Um, Paul and the gang uh, have been uh, a great partner to us over the last couple of years. Um, and we've really had a lot of fun doing some events with them. And I'm always excited to, uh, to help out with them and to work with them on things because they're as enthusiastic about these products as we are. Um, they're very much into, as I mentioned, quality. If you look at the brands they carry, um, I'm sure I missed about a thousand of them because they do have a lot of really great products in there. Um, but Husqvarna, Big Dog, um, still, um, yeah, and I mean, like, when it comes to concrete equipment as well, like, they're the authority. Uh, they have people from all over Canada that, uh, that shop on their website uh, because they have an incredible selection, uh, not just for workwear, but also for uh, a lot of tools of the trade. So, uh, and as again, again, I'll mention that they have the only online outlet for Black Ladder in Canada um, where they have a lot of our um, either discontinued or uh, slower moving stock or um, just things that we don't, don't really fit into our, uh, you know, our plans for the future. Um, but they also do have online and in-store a, um, a lot of our current stock and uh, they have a pretty great selection in-store too. What else can I talk about? Um, oh, the great question from car putting or car pewting. Um, if they don't have it, can they order it in? Absolutely they can. Um, actually, like I mentioned, there are stuff that they have on their website that isn't necessarily in store. Um, and uh, they, we do a lot of uh, shipping for them all over Canada. Um, yeah, they can definitely get stuff in for you. They have enough stuff in store that they can, you can kind of figure out what your size is for things and then they'll, they'll ship it to you uh, from their store. Oh, CJ answered that. I'm supposed to answer these questions. Um, all right, let's talk about high vis and uh, then I'm going to go take a nap. What do we got, 10 minutes left? Okay, be right back. This is our uh, 4938 um, high visibility shell. Uh, this is great uh, probably I would say most of the year. Actually, this is if you were going to pick one jacket to wear year round in Canada, I would say this would be your jacket. It's, um, <coughs> it's a um, wind and waterproof shell. It's got the CSA striping on the back, as you can see. As you can see, and uh, it's just an all-around great wind and waterproof shell. Um, if, like I mentioned, you can buy one jacket. I would get this jacket because you can just layer underneath it, and um, and it keeps you dry and uh, keeps the wind out as well. So this is an exceptional jacket for that purpose. Uh, it also has, if you are the type of person that is tied off, so you wear a harness, like you're climbing up on roofs or like you're doing balconies or something like that, um, uh, you're up a bucket or on some sort of a skyjack, um, you would definitely be tied off and because of that, typically what you would do is you throw your harness over top of your vest or your jacket and now you're blocking out all of the stripes, which technically you're not striped or certified. So what we've done with this jacket is we've added a zipper D-ring access in the back so that you can pull your harness through, put your harness on, throw your jacket on, pull the harness through, and uh, now you're tied off and safe and also certified, uh, visually certified as well. Um, a big thing I mentioned before with when you manufacture garments in China, especially high-vis stuff, uh, they just cut corners to make it as cheap as possible. 
And what the reason why you should invest in something quality is because we at Black Ladder, A, don't cut corners uh, with the, the design, but also with, um, with the quality of the products that we use. So this is all 3M, the highest level of 3M tape. Um, so this is going to remain more uh, reflective well, way longer than any other kind of uh, high visibility tape that's out there. Um, the way we construct these jackets, they're meant to withstand not just the not just the job if you're rubbing against rebar all day or whatever it is that you're getting into, but also the wash. This is a yellow jacket. It's going to get dirty. There's nothing you can do about that. And uh, but you need you need this to be safe and and, uh, and certified on site. So when this yellow jacket gets dirty, it will withstand the highest temperature wash. Um, so you don't have to baby this thing. Because a lot of high visibility jackets, you get one wash out of it and it's going to fall apart in the wash. So this jacket will withstand the job and the wash. Um, it's, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so being made in China, this is to tie up our uh, four cornerstones. Just to talk about one of the things we do um, when it comes to designing our products is when you're making something cheap, you draw a picture of a jacket on a big piece of... Um, on a big piece of cardboard, and that's how you make your swatch. Um, they don't take into consideration that people are of different sizes and shapes and, and that sort of thing. So when we built this jacket, um, we built it to be functional, and, um, and we designed it so that you could actually work in this thing. So I challenge you, if you go into any of our competitor stores, uh, or if you're trying out a competitor's brand, Put the jacket on, zip it up, and then try to put your hands up in the air. So you can see right now, like I can freely move around this thing, and the jacket, torso, and neck, and everything pretty much stays where it's supposed to. But if you do that with one of a, an ordinary jacket, <coughs> excuse me, when you go like this with your arm, the whole thing is going to come up like this, and you won't be able to do your job properly. So you can see, like, there's plenty of room in this thing for you to very freely do your job. You're going to be safe, you're going to be comfortable, you're going to be warm, you're going to be dry, and uh, you're going to be the talk of the town. Everyone that we know we sell these to, everyone's like, man, that's a nice jacket. Where do I get that thing from? And the answer is Canadian Equipment Outfitters or CEO. Just look at the link below. Canadian Equipment Outfitters. All right, we got time for another question or two, and it's pretty damn hot in this thing. So I'm going to take it off. Uh, ooh, great question. Great, great, great point, CJ. Um, any good, well, two things. Any good heavy socks for the winter? And do you sell any good shoes, boots that are durable slash waterproof? So, the answer to that is no. We, yes, we do have boots in Europe. Uh, we're working on getting them. It's a whole different level of certification for North America. Um, so that's something you could look for in the next probably couple of years. Uh, we're, we have conversations about this constantly, whether or not we're going to do that, because like I said, it's a very big undertaking to do that. So no, at the moment we don't have boots, um, but asking, we can recommend some of our partners that we would be um, uh, would be a good boot that we believe in. Um, some companies have similar um, similar. What's the word I'm looking for? My brain just shut down. Well, that's it for me. Um, similar morals, I guess, uh, and they would, uh, so we can recommend someone there. Uh, when it comes to socks, uh, I believe we are going to be bringing some socks. Uh, values, thank you, CJ. I, I, morals, but values is a good word. Uh, <laughs> uh, I believe we're going to be doing some socks. Um, I can't really say for sure, because I might get in trouble. But uh, I, I would say I don't see us not having socks um, coming in the future. But again, uh, at, if you're looking for something right now, we could probably recommend a brand that would be uh, of similar values to us. Um, and I will end off by talking about a very hot word right now, China. So um, I think we're pretty good at, in Canada of, at geography. But just in case um, you're not... Um, I would say that I think it's pretty common knowledge that China is not a region. China is a country. Um, and um, 
we at Black Ladder do not manufacture in China. Uh, all of our manufacturing is done in uh, Sri Lanka and Myanmar. And the reason why uh, it's important to have this distinction is because we manufacture in our own factories. Um, there is um, a lot of stigma when it comes to companies that manufacture, have third party manufacturing because they don't really have control of the quality of the manufacturer. So we're in charge of this process from the design where we work with people uh, to design these products all the way to the end when we hand it over to you. So we know exactly what's happening at every step of the way. Um, we have certifications that are, are um, environmental, uh, social, and quality uh, certifications as well. Uh, if you give me two seconds, I'll tell you what they are. I think it's um, 14,000 ISO 14,001. Uh, 8,001, and what else do we got here? Yeah, so we have got ISO 9001 is a quality certification. Uh, ISO 14001 is an environmental certification. So you can't get these qualifications unless you are very strict uh, with your environmental practices or quality practices. And lastly is the SA8000, which is the social responsibility, which basically means that we don't have any sort of like sweatshop labor or, uh, or that sort of thing. Actually, if you go to our Instagram, um, I think CJ is going to be putting up a video of uh, one of our factories during COVID-19. And um, it's, it's just to show you the level of of attention we pay to our employees. These are our employees, they're our family. Um, we, they're entitled to transportation to and from work. Um, if they need it, they can have uh, uh, two square meals while they're at work. It's a very beautiful and clean and happy place to work. People are literally lined up to work for us in, in Sri Lanka and Myanmar because um, we create a great environment for these people and we treat them like family. So I think that is, um, the major distinction, not to say anything bad about China specifically, but I, you can say that it is not quite as strict on some of their policies as we are in our factories in Sri Lanka and Myanmar. Um, I think that's about it for me. We're getting on to 2 o'clock. And uh, I just want to see if there's any other questions that have popped up, but I think we are pretty good. Um, socks. Canadian Carpenter saying that he got some stuff from us and great customer service. Uh, sorry, CEO. Uh, great customer service, which is true. I will say, um, Canadian Equipment Outfitters, uh, one of the main the reasons why we do have such a great relationship is because they pay so much attention to customer service. And I think. Uh, with these uncertain times and, and you know, even before COVID-19, just everyone moving off of Main Street and onto the internet, um, it's companies like Canadian Equipment Outfitters that pay attention to service that really make a difference um, because it's not just walking into a, a faceless big box store. Um, they'll go the extra mile for you. They really care about you um, and they really take care of you. So. Um, a huge reason why I wanted to do this is because they're a great partnership or partner of ours and we have a great partnership and I hope that that continues for a long time to come. Um, thank you to Canadian Equipment Outfitters, Paul, Matt and the gang for uh, inviting me to do this. Chaz, thanks for helping me set this up. Uh, it was kind of a struggle for us from an IT perspective but we got it at the 11th hour. Um, I want to thank CJ. He's really attractive and he lives in Montana. And uh, he also, um, you know, really helped out get this thing set up. And he's been um, helping me with the questions the entire time. So thank you guys um, for having me. And I really appreciate this opportunity. And I hope everyone stays safe out there and uh, takes care. Thank you very much.